Muslim, please, sir. You can't go in. Sorry, but there's no Is way. Is there someone higher than you? Yeah, me. That's it. There's no one higher than you? No. Well, he just got uh, somewhere to give him a travel card, and he's just uh, gone in his, his way without paying for a ticket because somebody was nice to give him a travel card. At Brixton, station supervisor Jose Montiero suspects a passenger may be taking drugs. We can afford to drugs. It's not drugs, sir. No? No, it's not. So what is that in the little box? It's prescribed drugs. Is it? Prescribed drugs. Trust right. Me, sir. Can you do me a favor? I'm Either not you take make him here. upstairs, right, or have you arrested. It's entirely up I'm to not you. Take him here, sir. I'm going. Right, you're going upstairs. I'm going, I'm going. No, you're going upstairs. To upstairs. I'm going to Paris. No, sir. you are going upstairs. Oh, okay. Monty is in a constant battle with touts and fair dodgers. This kind of encounter is all too familiar and sometimes ends badly. I've been assaulted there a couple of times. Well, one of them was a couple of kids which were hanging around the station. They uh, grabbed my heart, so I turned around, so they got a Coca-Cola bottle, they smashed it up through my lip, broken the tooth. Uh, and the other one was uh, a drunk. Uh, apart from the other ones, were minor little things. Pushing, spitting, uh, threatening is, is something that you always question yourself. So you always live a distance from the person. You live, you know, more than an arm's length so that, you know, he can't get at you. Mandy's new job in the control room gives her an overview of the whole station. <laughs> Not really my style. <laughs> what did you say that is? That it's a blazer, tartan blazer, isn't it? She has to record anything that's found at the station, ready to be sent up to the lost property office at Baker Street. Not everything that gets left behind causes a security alert. A Nokia camera phone, handbag. A pair of large shears, garden shears, that was found on the last train. This, these. Obviously, we've had to wrap them up. We found syringes, like, obviously, like, drugs and everything in tins. We've had a whole bag of, like, meat left on the train before. Come to think of it, this morning, because I caught my bus, like, four o'clock in the morning, I saw a member of staff, and he got on the bus, sat next to me. We got to Brixton, I got off the bus, and he goes, Mandy, your handbag. You see, it happens to us all. Sometimes you're so tired. Every year, over a hundred thousand items come to the lost property office, each with its own story. Only a quarter of them are ever claimed. This is one van's worth. We usually get three times this, which an average about 600 items a day. We have everything from televisions to surfboards to skateboards, bags, pencil cases, christening photos, wedding photos, umbrellas, obviously. If it's Christmas time, we get lots of wrapped Christmas presents. If it's sales time, we get lots of items where people have been out and bought stuff in the sales. Credit cards, passport, people's wallets, jewellery items, camera, laptop, computers, Wi-Fi system, makeup bags, quite common, a separate section for mobile phones. My Sony PSP, I only just got it imported from Japan, and brand new games console, just hadn't even got to play it, and it was in my bag, so. But it's my fault for the sleep. So. Edward Hackney hopes his bag's been handed in with all its valuable contents. If you could sign here, please, and just write down your address, OK? Dr Chaka and his wife won't even be able to go home if they don't find their lost bag. The handbag contains the <coughs> keys of our house back in Bombay. And we are going to go this weekend. So we will be out in the rain, in the cold, in Bombay. Can't get inside. For Julie Haley, managing the lost property office has taught her that there's always hope. The first thing that I really noticed since uh, I took this job on is the honesty of people. Um, and for me, that's really restored my faith in human nature. You never quite know what the person sitting next to you is carrying um, until you come and work in a lost property office. 
as you can see, we get lots of lots of toys coming into us. Um, again, that's really rewarding when we're able to give a toy back to a child. It might be their favourite toy, and they can't sleep without it. It's lovely and soft. Bless him. <laughs> so we try to break it down to make it a little bit easier for the people actually doing the searching, and also the storage. Kerry Jenkins is like a librarian of lost property. She stores each item according to its category and retrieves it if it's claimed. You get a feeling for the person whose property it belonged to, what sort of person they are, what job they do. Gives you an idea of other people's tastes. Some of the things are really lovely that come in, really expensive things as well and they're never claimed. We got a lot of photos of weddings and births and everything, and you think, what a shame they've lost all these photos. Edward's bag has been found. The lost property office logged everything that was in it when it was handed in. Towels, yeah. some cigarettes, tobacco. Yeah, and like a games console and stuff as well. We haven't received it. It was a 40 pence as well, or 4p, 4 pence. So they probably lost the PSP and the CD player and um, the phone by the sound of it as well. But, oh well, get my wallet back. <laughs> Done the bag, so it's fine. Two hundred and seventy-one pound fifty-four. Okay, that was still in your bag. I'm just going to make sure it's all there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's two hundred and seventy. You're very surprised to find the entire amount of money inside. Oh, you are. Thank you. Thank you. Our major problem was the keys, of course. <laughs> money is, of course, replaceable. But obviously some gentleman must have just returned it without opening the bag. And obviously the office checked up everything and kept it inside. Looks like it. Other, well, nothing has been lost. Back in Brixton, fans are arriving for a concert at the nearby Brixton Academy. This brings its own problems for Mandy on the night shift. I should really call the BTP and let them know we've got concert touts. They've been standing there for a while, they've got the tickets in their hand and a lot of them are quite, they're regulars. Guaranteed to see them wherever there's a concert, you'll probably see them. While Mandy worries about the ticket touts, Frenchy is on his way to a ceremony to honour his long service on the underground. I've been trying for a steady job, so I stayed there. But I didn't know it was going to end up for 25 years. It stayed in one job, but it worked out all right. Where I grow up is always taking responsibility for yourself and your actions, what you do. I was never a lazy person. Keep clean, don't break no laws, and try and focus yourself on something. My father, my mother was very proud, especially my mother. Cheers, mum. Meanwhile, Mandy is trying to get 5,000 goths safely home. The quicker we get them down and out, the better, because if that starts getting blocked up, we have to put station control in. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got two trains on the platform, everything's looking good. One's just outside Brixton, so as soon as one pulls out, another one will pull in. So, seems okay so far. No gaps in the service at the moment. When there's a kiddies concert, you know there's no problem. Everything's going to go nice and smooth. Obviously, this crowd, they're a lot older, a bit more rowdy, so got to be careful. Could you please put out your cigarette? Once again, to the gentlemen smoking on the escalators, could you please put out your cigarette? Thank you. Known to his colleagues as Frenchy, joined London Underground as Realman in 1979 at the age of 18. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Just, <laughs> don't, don't go down there. Just. <laughs> you've got an excellent attendance, I reckon, and you've only been off sick once in all these years. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. 
as Frenchie reflects on the last 25 years, another day of service comes to an end at Brixton. Mandy prepares to go home. Well, I just came here to have fun. It didn't happen. <laughs> but now I'm here, I'm not... It's not bad, really. I can't complain. I'm still learning. And every day something new can happen. Next time, AJ's customer care skills are put to the test. I'm not going to no. jump in or anything. I'm not because one of those crazy no, people. No, it's, it's not While Tom's oh, got his own approach. Come on, oh. how are going? Coming up later on Sky 3, Lily blows away the cobwebs from another long-forgotten murder inquiry in Cold Case. Then at 11, all good things must come to an end as we count down the 50 ways to leave your TV lover. <laughs>